Welcome back to the channel. Recently, HasLab had a crowdfunding campaign for a Ghost Rider action figure, Robbie Reyes, not the original Johnny Blaze, and it didn't get funded. And it sounds like there are problems right from the beginning. And here to talk to me about that is Aaron Sparrow, the man that brings home six figures a week, six action figures. I'd be doing better if I was getting the Ghost Rider uh, Hell Charger, but uh, apparently I'm not getting it. So you put in for this thing, and it's got all the bells and whistles. There are multiple heads on it. You could change out the, the flames on the tires. There's all kinds of cool stuff with this. But it was $350, which does seem expensive. What went wrong with this HasLab Ghost Rider crowdfunding campaign? I think what went wrong with it from the very beginning, if you if you listen to the fan feedback, uh, and uh, I, I had a lot of fun with the fan feedback because I actually went in and like, antagonized people a little bit. <laughs> but uh, everybody was saying that $350 was too, too much. It was too expensive. Uh, they didn't want to uh, pay that. It should be $250. It should be $100. You know, people were like, uh, kind of like throwing out all these numbers that they thought it should be. Um, it had now it had unlockable tiers. You know, if you got to, if it had been fully unlocked, you would have had four extra figures. You know, in addition to the Ghost Rider that came with the car, uh, so it would have been a pretty good value. But people just weren't willing to put into in for it. And it's always kind of interesting to me that they won't because you don't get charged unless it funds. So just putting in, just pledging, like you can always pull back out if you decide that uh, that you don't want it. But uh, people were uh, people were definitely just uh, wanting to teach Hasbro a lesson. And Hasbro heard them. I know you talked to the guys at Hasbro themselves. You are in the toy industry. What did they think about this? Did it feel like it was failing just from the beginning, or did they think they could write the write the ship and maybe get it funded? Yeah, when uh, when I talked to them in New York, they uh, they seemed uh, you know they were a little uh, kind of taken aback at the uh, the fan vitriol that uh, they were experiencing uh, because you know the guys that are on the design team. You know, they they're they're not the business end of things. They're not the ones, I guess, who decide who what what to charge or what the thing is. They're you know they're excited. They're fans. They want to get this stuff out there. And and the guys that we were talking to were really excited about it, uh, and uh, really you know liked the tiers that they were doing. And and he even said like he goes, I understand that like people are like, well, the tiers aren't Ghost Rider specific. It doesn't make sense. And he uh, but they were doing like demons. Uh, so you were getting Mephisto. You would have gotten Hellstorm. Uh, in Damon Hellstrom. Uh, you would have gotten the Goblin Queen. And yeah, the Goblin Queen's not connected to Ghost Rider, but uh, as the guy from Hasbro explained, they're not allowed to do certain characters in the mass market or even in the specialty market. So you're not going to get a retro card at Goblin Queen, you know, put out to comic book stores or anything like that, because Disney will just not allow, like, scantily clad or demonic characters uh, to be put out. So, you know, it's the only way you were going to get Mephisto. It was the only way that you were going to get, uh, you know, Goblin Queen or, or Hellstorm. Uh, so it's unfortunate. It's really unfortunate for those of us that uh, that would like action figures and those characters uh, that can't customize them like I can. Um, it, it's a disappointment for them not to be able to get those. Well, it sounds like they had the best intentions. Just as somebody on the outside, and I'm not in the toy industry, and I'm not a collector like you are. You are a hardcore collector, and these are things that you're definitely interested in. And paying $350 for an action figure is normal for you. It is abnormal for me, but just thinking about it as a comic book fan, $350 is very expensive. I think Robbie Reyes was only introduced in 2012 during the all new, all different kind of era. Now he does have the car and that action figure did absolutely look cool. It looks badass. But people that are willing to spend $350 on an action figure or this type of collectible, very high end kind of stuff, are likely to be in their late 30s, maybe their 40s, early 50s, or something like that. Their Ghost Rider is Johnny Blaze, or perhaps even, you know, Kitsch or whatever. They're probably not as excited to go out and spend that much money on a character that's so new with so little history like Robbie Reyes. There's probably some of that. Uh, most of the complaints I saw, it, it largely seemed to be centered around a rumor that the original price was going to be $250. And then that Hasbro executive said, no, no, pump it up, make it $350. And so that's what a lot of people are hanging their objections on. I never really understood where that rumor came from or where that information came from. So I don't know if it's true. Uh, if it is true, I mean, obviously that is uh, that is concerning. But it seems like a lot of the people that were complaining actually had this idea that if they just held on to their money, if they didn't pledge, if they didn't uh, if they didn't back it, Hasbro would be forced to drop the price, and then they could back it. Um, but that's never going to happen. Do that. No, they don't do that. You're never going to see that happen. Um, so, you know, it's just one of those things where it's like, okay, you decided it wasn't worth it for you. You decided it wasn't a good value for you. You know, and if you don't think something's a good value, that's that's up to you to choose. Um, the, the weird thing is, is that they were actually like berating people that thought it was about a good enough value, people that were interested in it. You know, they were uh, in the comment sections telling you how stupid you were for backing it and, and you know, oh, you're a Hasbro shill and, and et cetera, et cetera. It's like, look, you may not want it. You may not think it's a good value, but and that's fine for you and your budget, but don't try to convince me with my budget that it's not a good value. I was in. <laughs> so, uh, you know, 
what are you going to do? But, uh, you know, the thing that's interesting to me is that uh, it's just this idea that like, OK, if you don't want it, if you don't think it's a good value, then just move on. But like you, the people were just there, like kind of like attacking the people that did want it. And it's ridiculous to me. It's like, I don't think Fabergé eggs are a good value. I, I wouldn't pay for one of those, but I don't go to the auction and slap one out of Mr. Monopoly's hand while he's trying to buy one. You know, it's like his budget, his collect, you know, his collecting, it's different than mine. You know, he can, he can go ahead and do what he wants. And I just wish more of the, uh, more of the fans had kind of that attitude. It's like, okay, I don't want it, but I'm happy for you guys that you guys are getting it if it gets bad. There's no doubt. Like that toy was so high end, it was not even funny. I was very impressed. All the accessories available on that thing were just going to be top of the line, really badass stuff. And I personally, you know, I do like Robbie Reyes. As far as the all new, all different characters that they created, I think he's probably the best one. He was in the Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. TV show, which I thought was a pretty good interpretation of the character. We've seen him in the Avengers, and he definitely stood out as actually pretty good there. But it's surprising that there isn't any interest because when you look at like, I think recently there was a Galactus action figure with far less accessories than that uh, than that Ghost Rider, and it was four hundred dollars. And it not only got funded, it actually doubled the amount of people that it wanted to back it. Yeah, I think well, I mean Galactus being a more uh, a longstanding character, um, he, you know, and him being a big posable action figure, he's really nice. I have one. Uh, he's absolutely spectacular. Um, Worth four hundred dollars. Uh, yeah, definitely. I mean, to me, but, you know, I, like, I look, I understand, like, everybody has a different budget. Like, you know, it may take you longer to make $400 and it may take some other people. So it's it's not, you know, not worth it to you. Uh, but, you know, to some of us, it is. So, you know, don't try to rain on our parade. Uh, but yeah, the Galactus is really nice. If that Galactus came out today, the guy at Hasbro told me that, you know, with the uh, the increased costs and, and things like that, it would be uh, closer to $500. So maybe it wouldn't have funded quite as spectacularly. But, you know, the economy was also in a much better shape when Galactus was offered. Uh, you know, we uh, we had a different administration. We had, uh, you know, different prosperity going on in the country. We weren't, you know, looking at a, a looming re recession. You know, we didn't have the crazy inflation. So I understand right now, probably, you know, a bad time to try and launch, you know, a $350 high-end collectible. But at the end of the day, you got to realize that what's being offered are high-end collectibles. They're not for everybody. They're not for your casual collector. They're for the hardcore that have the expendable income to purchase those sorts of things. Yeah, I, I definitely personally, I think, you know, the idea that Robbie Reyes just doesn't have the cachet with the older audience that they're courting here with the prices probably led to the demise because there are a lot of cool stuff going on there. As far as the toy market itself and what you're seeing is the recession hurting other people? Is it causing people to go out there and spend less money on their action figures and, you know, their hobbies that they're working on? It absolutely is. Uh, the, you know, your average your average action figure now is over $25, especially, uh, you know, and Hasbro has uh, seemed to have gotten greedy recently. You know, they had uh, some things that were out there in the press that, uh, you know, they had a record-breaking year last year, and they're determined to, you know, even you know, have even break that record this year. And so what they did is they, you know, they jacked the prices on everything. Uh, everything's just a little more expensive. You know, you're getting, uh, they, they cut back on their packaging, made their packaging cheaper. They said it's, you know, for ecological reasons, but uh, I'm sure there's uh, there's some cost saving in there too that, uh, you know, that they're doing. Um, so yeah, you know, they've kind of like turned a lot of the fans against them. Uh, you know, I've definitely seen a slowdown in like their Marvel, project, uh, Marvel product sales is down. Uh, Star Wars is dead. It's Star Wars is flatlined. But I think that's not only the recession. I think that's also just people have lost interest in uh, in Star Wars. I mean, no, you, you've seen the ratings. No one's even watching Andor. So um, yeah, there's a lot of complex things going on in the industry right now, and I, I don't think that the inflation is helping it at all. As an action figure collector, somebody that's in the toy industry, what do you think HasLab can do in the future to maybe mitigate these things and maybe get the projects actually fully funded? Do they need to pick better characters, maybe cheaper products, something like that? I definitely think that there's some things that they can learn from this. Uh, one of the things might be just showing all of the tiers all at once. You know, everything that you're going to get if you back this thing and it hits a certain number. Uh, that I think people would feel more comfortable buying in at that point because they know, okay, well, for $350, I'm going to get all this if it all unlocks. And then, you know, with the added bonus of, you know, you can put your money in, but then you can pull it out if it doesn't get to that level uh, because it's no longer worth it for you. I think that's a way to do it. I think that just... Um, you know, Hasbro maybe, uh, you know, looking at uh, not breaking the bank on everybody every time, uh, you know, on every figure. I understand that, you know, companies out there to be profitable. But, you know, when you've had record profits because of, uh, you know, windfall year, and then you're like, and we're going to do better. And, and you're just like cranking stuff out and, and juicing the charges for it just so that you can uh, make that extra money. You are going to alienate fans at some point. And at some point, these are all things that are unnecessary to people's lives. They're frivolous things. And when they get to a point where they're too expensive for people to uh, justify spending the money on, it's an easy thing to let go of, just like comics. 
this is not the first conversation Aaron and I have had about collectibles. In fact, about a year ago, we were talking about how the action figure market was white hot in 2021. They were just selling everything left and right other than Star Wars. Definitely go back in the Wayback Machine if you're into action figures, toys, collectibles. Check this one out. Aaron and I have a great conversation. If you don't see it here, it's also a link in the video description.